This is a comprehensive capital budgeting example. It's problem 1120 from the 10th edition of Fundamentals of Corporate Finance by Ross Westfield and Jordan. Here is the data that is provided to us. Magila Golf has decided to sell a new line of golf clubs and these clubs will sell for $825 per set and they'll have a variable cost of $395 per set. The variable costs are the costs related to per unit. So as the production goes up, the total variable cost is going to go up. Some examples of the variable cost will be the labor and the material used to build the item. The fixed cost each year will be $9,200,000. And the fixed costs are the costs that are incurred regardless of how many units a company builds. So for example, salaries of managers, these are fixed regardless of how many units are built. Insurance premiums will be fixed regardless of how many units a company builds. Property taxes paid on the manufacturing plant are another example of fixed costs. The company is expected to sell 55,000 sets per year for seven years. A side effect of building these proposed units is that the company will lose sales of 10,000 sets of its high-end clubs and these high-end clubs sell at $1,100 per unit and have a variable cost of $650. So the loss of sales of high-end clubs is known as the cannibalization effect or the erosion or side effects. So in this case there is a negative side effect and the negative side effect should be considered when we do the evaluation of this project. We'll take a look at how we're going to do that. Sales of its low-end clubs, however, are expected to rise by 12,000 sets. So this is a positive side effect. And the low-end clubs, they sell for $410 per unit, and they have variable costs of $185 per unit. The company has spent $150,000 for a marketing study. Now this is a sunk cost and it should be ignored. A sunk cost is a cost that has already occurred and regardless of whether you accept the project or do not accept the project, this cost is incurred. And this cost should be ignored when we do the evaluation of the project. The company has also spent $1 million on research and development for the new clubs. Again, this is another sunk cost and it should be ignored. The plant and equipment required for manufacturing will cost $29,400,000 and will be depreciated on a straight line basis. An increase in the networking capital of $1,400,000 is needed and this will be needed initially when the project is to be launched. The tax rate is 40%. The cost of capital for this project is 10%. We need to find the payback period, the net present value, and the internal rate of return for this project. Let's take a look at an overview of the initial investment. This is a seven-year project and initially we'll have the capex or the capital expenditure for plant and equipment. And this is true for basically any project. There is a capital expenditure required at the beginning of the project. And typically the capital expenditure 
results in an after-tax salvage value at the end of the project. The after-tax salvage value is calculated as pre-tax salvage value minus and it taxes that are due on the sale of the plant and the equipment. There's also networking capital requirement, which typically would occur initially. And this networking capital is recaptured at the end of the project. Then the project will generate cash flows from year to year. These are operating cash flows. And in this case, we have operating cash flows for seven years. To calculate the operating cash flows, we are going to use pro forma income statements. So let's take a look at pro forma income statement, how we are going to work on it. We are going to start with sales. We are going to subtract costs and that will give us EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation. We deduct depreciation from EBITDA, and we get EBIT, or the earnings before interest and taxes. We subtract taxes, and we get net income, or the net operating profit after taxes. When we are evaluating projects and trying to come up with the operating cash flows, we assume that the interest expense is going to be zero. So we calculate the operating cash flow by adding depreciation back to the net operating profit after taxes. This is known as the bottom-up approach. So this is the overview of all our cash flows or the total cash flows. And we're going to discount them at 10%, which is given to us as the discount rate. Let's take a look at the initial investment. We are told that the initial investment will be 29400000 The depreciation is straight line, so equal depreciation every year. And the depreciation then will be $4,200,000 per year. So the book value at the end of the seventh year is zero because the entire plant and equipment will be depreciated to zero. The after-tax salvage value equals pre-tax salvage value minus any taxes. So in this case, the pre-tax salvage value is implied to be zero. And since the book value of the machine is zero and the pre-tax salvage value is also zero, there is no tax due, so the taxes are zero as well. So the after-tax salvage value is going to be zero. So here we have zero as our after-tax salvage value. The networking capital initially is 1,400,000. So we are going to recover that in the seventh year, at the end of the seventh year. We are now going to take a look at the operating cash flows and as we said earlier we are going to start with sales the unit price is given to us as eight hundred and twenty five dollars and the expected units to be sold are fifty five thousand so the total sales of this product are going to be forty five million three hundred and seventy five thousand we are now going to take a look at the cannibalization effect or the side effect. First, let's take a look at the positive side effect of the low-end model. The unit price is 410 and there's a variable cost of 185. So the net sales lost are $410 minus 185 and we multiply that by $12,000 and we get 2 million 700,000. So this is our this is our net sales gained. We don't include the fixed cost in our calculations here because the low end units are still being built and there is fixed cost associated with them. If we include the fixed cost again over here, we would be double counting the fixed cost. So we do not 
consider the fixed cost when we calculate the cannibalization effect. Now let's calculate the cannibalization effect of on the expensive golf clubs or the high-end golf clubs. The unit price is $1,100. The variable cost is $650. And the unit sales that are lost is 10000 so we have eleven hundred dollars minus six fifty, which is the net sales lost per unit. We multiply it by ten thousand units, and we come up with four million five hundred thousand dollars. Again, we don't include the fixed costs over here. So here we have all the sales combined. Proposed sales are expected to be forty. The sales of the proposed model are expected to be forty-five million three hundred and seventy-five thousand. The sales lost, or the net sales lost, of the high-end units, are four million five hundred thousand. So we subtract that amount from forty-five million three hundred and seventy-five thousand. And the sales gained of low end units are two million seven hundred thousand. We add that number, so we find the net sales to be forty three million five hundred and seventy five thousand. Now we are given the variable costs per unit of three ninety five. We multiply that by fifty five thousand. So that comes to twenty-one million seven hundred twenty-five thousand. So out of the net sales, we subtract the variable cost, we subtract the fixed cost, and we get EBITDA, which is twelve million six hundred fifty thousand. We subtract the depreciation. Remember, this is a straight line depreciation, $4,200,000 each year. And when we subtract depreciation from EBITDA, we get the EBIT of $8,455,000 a year. From the EBIT, we subtract the taxes, which are which are estimated to be 40%. So we subtract the taxes of $3,380,000 from the EBIT, and we get the net income or the net operating profit after taxes of $5,070,000 each year. We add back the depreciation to the net income or the net operating profit after taxes, and we get the operating cash flows for each year, and they are $9,270,000. The OCF, again, as we said earlier, is net operating profit after taxes plus depreciation. So we are going to take a look at the total cash flows now. The operating cash flows year after year, they're nine million two hundred and seventy thousand for seven years. The capital expenditure in year zero or initially is twenty nine million four hundred thousand. And the salvage value is zero. After tax salvage value of the capital expenditure is zero. So in the seventh year we have zero. The networking capital or the changes in networking capital are one million four hundred thousand dollars, which is the networking capital required for the project, and it is going to be recaptured in seven years. So we have a positive cash flow of one million four hundred thousand dollars in the seventh year. And the total cash flows we put everything together is 
going to be $30,800,000 outflow at t equals zero. And then we have six cash flows of 9270000 and the cash flow of $10,670,000 in the seventh year. And here is the timeline for these cash flows. Let's take a look at the net present value of these cash flows. When we discount these cash flows at 10%, we get the net present value of 15 million 48,664. The internal rate of return is 23% or 23.46% to be exact. Now we are going to calculate the NPV and the IRR on a financial calculator. And we are going to be using Texas Instruments BA2+. First, we enter the cash flow worksheet and we are going to press second clear work that way any data that is left behind from an earlier calculation is erased so that it doesn't interfere with our new calculations. Our initial cash flow is 30,800,000 and since this is an outflow we make it negative. We hit the enter key and now we are ready to enter the first cash flow, which is the OCF of 9,270,000. We hit the enter key. This OCF cash flow occurs six times. So we enter six for frequency, hit the enter key, the down arrow button. Now we are ready to enter the cash flow in the seventh year, which is 10 million. 670,000 and this includes the OCF plus the recovery of the networking capital. We hit the enter key again. Now we hit the NPV button. Our discount rate is 10%. So we key in 10 and hit the enter key. Press the down arrow key again. Hit the compute key to compute the net present value. To calculate the IRR, we simply press the IRR button, hit compute. Now we are going to calculate the payback period, which is the length of time it takes to recover the original investment. So we have an investment of $30,800,000. In the first year, we have OCF of 9,270,000. So we recovered that amount, and the balance to be recovered is 21,530,000. In the second year, we recover another 9,270,000. So the balance after year two to be recovered is 12,260,000. In the third year, we recover 9,270,000 again. So the balance to be recovered after three years is 2,990,000. The time to recapture the balance then equals the balance amount divided by the operating cash flow of the fourth year. So that gives us 0 0.32 years. Therefore, the total payback period is 3.32 years. Let's summarize the problem. We had an initial investment of $29,400,000 in equipment. We also had an initial investment of $1,400,000 in networking capital. We discarded the sunk cost we calculated the OCF using pro forma income statement and it came out to be $9,270,000 in years one through seven. We determined that the after tax salvage value of equipment was zero. The network and capital was recovered in year seven. We discounted the cash flows at 10% to find the NPV, we calculated the IRR and the payback period. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this was useful.